Hi friends, my name is Zach Ramlin. In today's video, we're gonna be going through the timeline for the short film, Clementine. Clementine line. Now you might be looking at all this and be like, oh my God, there's so many things going on. I have basically multiple uh, sequences. Uh, each sequence is a compilation of different scenes. So for example, these are just sort of like B-roll shots of the house that we shot for the film. And these were just like cutaways. There was no actual scene that they were involved in. I just wanted to have them. This again are just drone shots of the house. This is the opening credit sequence known as montage edit. This is a VFX plate. The rest are sort of categorized into individual scenes to make it easier to edit. Instead of editing your whole film in one timeline, I suggest editing it in micro chunks so that it kind of uh, is easier to look at. Then once those micro chunks are done, depending on how many scenes you have, so for Clementine, I think we had around 26 scenes. So rather than doing 26 scenes in one timeline, I did about 10 sequences with about one to two to three to four scenes in each sequence. I hope that makes sense. But for this uh, video, I'm gonna be showing you sort of the squished timeline and showing you uh, sort of one of our final versions of the film to give you a bit of an overview of how a movie is edited. If you like the stuff that I'm talking about on this channel and wanna watch more, you can hit subscribe, it'd be a huge help. If you also wanna see the movie before I spoil the shite out of it, uh, you can uh, go see it. There'll be a link to it in the description. This is the first, one of the first versions of the film. So this is like a template placeholder VFX thing. It's to emulate the uh, little uh, VFX element that I got the VFX company Luma Pixels to do. If you guys are looking for visual effects, uh, I recommend taking a look at those guys. They were a great team to work with. Um, but also just go out on Facebook and find a local film community or just make a post about it. That's how we ended up connecting and they ended up being a great team to work with alongside of my other VFX artist, Genesis. She did a great job of piecing things together too. Um, I can't suggest her because she's like a legitimate VFX person who's very busy. So, but she's a great human being. And if we kind of play throughout the scene, we've got this opening shot of Jackie playing uh, this game with her friend and then uh, this VFX comp uh, spot. Now in the final film, it is a VFX shot, but if you're kind of in work in progress, set it as a VFX comp and label it. And then what I'll even do is make a marker and let myself know that it is in fact a VLFX shot, <laughs> a VFX shot and label it a certain color that you want all your VFX shots to be. So we'll make it green. And so basically that way, when you skim through your timeline, you'll know all the little bits to where you have uh, notes. So VFX, let's say, are green. Um, notes uh, for certain areas or edit marks will be blue. And uh, something like red could be sound effects. So this sort of just gives you a little bit of a guidance throughout the process. If you're filming a movie, what I would recommend is roll through all of your takes for the most part. So if you've got a scene where you've got the camera dollying and uh, you wanted the dolly shot, just get it to land on a shot and then roll throughout the scene. It saves time when you're filming because most times when you're making a movie, time's tight. And instead of like, Cut, move on, go to the next thing. Cut, move on, go to the next thing. If you've got a shot, roll with it and let the take play out because you never know what you might get from that angle. It actually takes less time to roll through a take than it does to reset, slap sticks, get everyone lined up and do it again. Now, what we did is we rolled out the entire scene throughout these uh, three angles. So this shot, this shot, and uh, this overhead looking down at her. And then we did this insert for the VFX that took about a couple seconds. Now, the only other shot that we did that was not um, sort of with the continuous roll of everything else was this shot of Jackie popping up into frame when the alarm goes off. This is because I wanted to change the blocking or change the camera blocking within the scene to kind of pop us out of the moment that she was currently in. This leads me to the first thing you're probably wondering is how do you edit a scene? How do you choose between shots? So for example, with this one in Jackie, there are a series of shots to choose from. This side angle kind of dollying up shot, this overhead of her, this low angle looking up, and this shot of her popping into frame. And the shot of her popping into frame is the final shot in the sequence, so that's the one that we used. This one kind of low down, while it interesting, I really found that it didn't show her expression a whole lot, so we only cut to it really quickly. Kind of our main coverage is this overhead looking down on her in this side angle of her expression. And if you notice, most of the scene plays out from this side angle because I kind of thought it gave the best performance from Jackie. And this one here looking down on her, while I liked it, there wasn't as many performance bits that I liked as well as um, I just found that looking down on her wasn't the angle to which I wanted to establish her with. Rather, looking at her from the side kind of put us more into her perspective. And to make it feel like it's a separate 
shot, I believe I punched in and did a digital zoom in on this shot to make it feel like it was different. Yeah, so I scaled into about 117%, but it's the exact same shot as this one. I just scaled it in so it felt a little bit different than the original. To give yourself some more options from shots, especially when you do a narrative, scaling in, like cutting away from the shot, then cutting back to the shot and scaling in can make it feel like you shot on more coverage, but really you just use the power of 4K. Nice to have these notes because when you go into getting notes from other people, they're gonna be like, why is there just this shot of a blank wall? Or even when you're watching it, your imagination might not be fully there. So having something. What's that? I gotta run. Perimeter sensor detected. Living area south. Please confirm. Perimeter sensor detected. Living area south. Please confirm. Perimeter sensor detected. Living area Mom? south. Please confirm. Dad? Perimeter sensor detected. So we have the alarms go off, Jackie runs down the set of stairs, and then we get some establishing shots of the home. Whenever you're making a movie, establishing shots are incredibly important. And since we wanted to wake up with the main character, I didn't want to show the home before the alarm goes off. So this alarm going off of the home was a good opportunity to sort of get a glimpse of our space and then kind of get our first wide of the space when she's running down the stairs and then running down the hall. And using her as the vessel to explore the space, I thought that would be a fun tool to tell in the story. So we have her running through the house, the sort of match cut of uh, the photo on the frame. This was a VFX shot. Um, and this one, you can actually kind of tell that it's a VFX shot because you can I didn't mask it properly. For rough audio editing, if you're getting someone to do sound on your film, what you'll want is temp sound in this piece. So for example, that scene that the film opened up on it would have felt very weird if it was just her with no music. We tried it out and it feels very empty. But if you threw in a track, I use this as temp music just to give the movie a little bit of energy and it ended up being the song for the final piece. I went on to one of my favorite music websites on the internet, which is Musicbed, and grabbed, uh, I typed in vintage tracks because I thought it might give a little bit of emphasis of her character. In a short time, you want to try and explain and explore your character as much as possible, and showing, not telling, is one of the best ways to do that. And auditory music is part of that process of showing, I guess. You hear it. I mean, you are telling, but it's, it's, it's hearing, like, what is the music that explains the person? And I thought that was a fun way to kind of jump out of that kind of like dark opening that we have. Uh, we zoom into Jackie and for this bit again I have a temp sound of these alarms going off in the house sort of just play as the score within the scene. We don't play any music composition done by Chromosomes who did the score for the film until after really the first act. Now there's that opening scene that plays score just to give us a glimpse, but the real music comes in uh, later on in the film. Perimeter sensor detected. Living area south. Please confirm. Perimeter sensor detected. Living area Mom? south. Please confirm. I wanted us just to get spatial awareness, and spatial awareness can usually be done with just diegetic sound, which is sound that comes from the space. And the alarms did a really good job at doing that. And this is a scene that we critiqued and, and went through a number of versions because I was wondering like, how, what angles do we cut to the back of her? What angles do we show her whole body? And one of the powers of editing is choosing the right take. Now I say this in another video, but if you want to really dial in on your performance and finding the best bits to tell the story, edit to the best of your knowledge on the first pass but give yourself the flexibility to go back and find the better takes later after you've assembled the entire movie. Now, why I recommend that is because you don't know what the vibe of the film is gonna be until it's all constructed. I call this doing a pass, where you watch through your entire movie from start to finish and see, maybe we want that one take where they were a little bit more aggressive or where they were more curious or playful. Maybe they were more pissed off. Jackie, our incredible lead actor here, played through a range of emotions through lots of scenes, and it gave us more flexibility within the edit to play with. Now, you'll notice on my timeline that I use uh, this aspect ratio black bar PNG. You might be like, Zach, why don't you set your timeline in 
uh, without black bars? Well, one of them is I actually like to export the film for color uh, full frame so that I have more frames to uh, to choose from when it comes to thumbnails. So uh, this whole take plays out as a side angle from her. It's kind of a long take of her expression as she tilts her head up and then uh, we do a pull away. I thought it was a really good expression that Jackie has. And uh, one of the biggest challenges with this movie, it was doing the dialogue for the AI. There's like a robot in the film that talks to her and Jackie had to just act with uh, one of my producers reading lines off camera, which then would be replaced by an AI from this website called Murph AI. The next sequence of the film is this opening credit sequence, which I had a lot of fun with, uh, basically on day one to sort of get our feet wet on shooting the film, we decided to just go through, it was me and Jackie, I grabbed my gimbal and we just shot all of these home shots and these beautiful scenes, her in the shower, doing breath work, all these things. And uh, it was able to kind of establish the tone of the movie. So when the cinematographer came in the next day, I got to show him this little opening credit sequence that I cut together. And uh, I think it also just sets the tone for the movie, but this was like a proof of concept so that before we started shooting, people could start getting excited about it and it really worked. Now we cut to this sequence with her and uh, the spider. This was a whole sequence that we had actually shot uh, that we recorded dialogue on. Um, it was very hard to go through. This spider was a pain in the ass. I, I would definitely work with a more professional spider. I think uh, in the next film I work on, you got to get into the glass. He would just, you'd be a dick. Whenever I finished shooting the movie the day of after we cleaned up the house i went home and just ripped into editing this and after the span of about four days the whole movie was edited and what this bought us was the fact that we could go back to the home and do insert shots for scenes that we needed additional coverage on. For example, in this scene, I really liked how we shot it. We had this angle and this angle to play from, but we never got the feeling that she was trapped in the home. So this shot uh, of the wall, uh, this shot here from outside was actually captured afterwards because I needed just something to make her feel enclosed and also to catch her reaction. So if you know, as the camera's kind of shaking around, uh, we shot it on a gimbal out of the window and then we actually had to ADR the line. So these are Jackie's lines that she just read at home and my sound designer, Josh Hemming, uh, was able to put a nice reverb on it for it to blend in and feel better. Like I said before, have your nice dolly shot as your opener and honestly, it is such a good just like ender shot. So you're like, okay, shot, dolly's in or scene dolly's in scene ends on a dolly out. It's the same move. We just played it all out from that angle and then pulled away as the scene ended. And it was a really good way for us to like escape the space when she's getting frustrated in the house. That cuts to a nice still of the spider acting as what I'm hoping, a symbolization of her trapped in the home. I hope you got it. And it kind of sets the tone of stuff going wrong. Uh, we have this moment of her bending down and tilting down. Now in the latest cut of the film, I actually trimmed the shot right down. This is like a long dolly shot I just found went way too long of her tilting down on her feet and looking at the glass. Sometimes you've got to cut things down. So if you see the shots like still going in the new take, I, instead of making it all one, I just like cut straight away to her going for this bloody piece. And I think it just picks up the pace a lot better. Um, in this, in this scene here, we're cutting back to these VFX plate shots of the wall. I was just guessing, I don't understand how Marvel movies do this, where they use all this VFX. All of it is based on assumption. I have a really good team of people who are able to work on the VFX while I was editing this, but even so you don't know the pacing of it. You're not working with expression. You're working with digital images. So a lot of it, at least in the indie realm is just a guessing game. And uh, I'm getting better at VFX guessing, but if you find yourself like just cra like smashing your head off a wall, he's like, I don't know how this is gonna work. It's because it's very confusing um, because you don't have anything. Like most of the film is just cutting back to blank walls in the house. So a style of editing that this movie has is going from wides to close-ups or close-ups to wides to cut us out of scenes. So for example, cutting from that wide of her at the door then to a close-up of a spider or cutting from a close-up of her face to now a wide of the home. And we shot in this beautiful home, so wides were really fun to do. Uh, because it kind of established a lot. Nick Pilecki just had it on his Dana dolly and just rocked these super wide shots uh, that worked really organically with the film and gave us kind of context of the space. I also just wanted to shoot as wide as we could because the house was excellent. We cut to this little scene of her uh, going through 
uh, the house, it's doing that same trick where the camera pushes in for this bit. It's a push in, that's how the scene starts. And then you won't believe it, it ends on a pull away from the door. Holy smokes. And then we get these nice little exterior shots of the house. And I had sort of a pool of shots to sort of snag from of the house. Um, b-roll sunrise and i could just grab any shots i'm like oh this is like a cool staircase shot or or what about like the sun coming through this thing and uh those were just sort of my shots that i would go to at any point and start to piece together camera pushing in it's a great tool if you want to start a scene push in if you want to end a scene pull out if you want to do something different maybe push in for the ending and pull away at the beginning i don't know and the coverage is closer this time because we're more in her space now this sequence was done as a series so oopsies uh what we would do frig i keep ripple deleting what we would do is jackie ripped through this scene so many times from this angle and to keep her performance at like this high level, um, we just got her to like keep freaking out and freaking out and freaking out so that we kept, kept that energy and we really got the best energy at the end of the take. If you know the shot that they're not, you're not gonna use as your main shot and it's like a really heavy emotional, don't get them to go 110% on that shot. Get them just to go at it. But this one, I really wanted her to just give it. So we went as a series. She, Jackie just kept going and going, and the emotions got higher and higher, and it gave us a lot of options in the edit. Let me guess. You're going to start on a close-up, and then you're going to go to a wide. What the frig? How is... And this was a scene that I wanted to shoot kind of more like a David Fincher film where the camera moves its position in the space as opposed to... Um, blocking, changing, or the camera actually moving within the shot. So every cut moves its blocking. So we start on this angle, then we get a little bit closer, then we get a little bit closer, then we get a little bit closer, and then we kind of navigate through all of that in this, getting to this very close up, uh, which if you have a scene where you want to give a little movement, I am a huge fan of digital scale-ins. This, while it looks like an optical scale because it's moving so slow, uh, this is a digital scale. So I just set it to 128 and zoomed out all the way to 100 so that it gave us just like, we're, we're kind of like exiting her world and going into this wide when the power goes out inside the house. And we do again, that kind of camera blocking move. So we go close up, then to a medium, then to a wide and whoa. You're kidding me. The camera dollies out of the scene. If you are an editor working on a film, it's really good to have cutaways and detail shots. I learned this actually doing documentary work with Mark Bone. You want texture and detail shots just as much as you want your A-roll. Well, B-roll is sort of this, I want to say, cringe name for footage because of what we all did as young filmmakers and just shot a bunch of B-roll. What you want is texture shots that actually explain something. So while this is technically B-roll, it tells the story so that we're not just following her all the time. We want to know what the space is like that she's in because it gives the audience a little bit more of a feeling of what's happening. So go take a look at Clementine if you want to see how all of this pieces together. This was a labor of love and I absolutely loved making this movie. Um, if you guys like the making of types things and would like to see more about how this is edited, let me know in the comment section below and I would love to give you a deeper dive and a deeper tour. I would say just some keynote to know are make individual sequences for each scene before piecing it all together. Edit your movie within a sort of flow uh, before going through with a fine tooth comb. If you start with a fine tooth comb, by the time you get to the end, you're just going to want to shoot yourself in the foot because it's just going to take so long. And it also might not give you the best results because you should know the tone of the movie as it goes together, not individually. So Edit it to the best of your ability from the beginning, um, but don't overkill it. And uh, yeah, thank you. Let me know what you think of Clementine. If you like the movie, go comment on the movie, share with all your buddies. But other than that, absolutely love you guys. Have an amazing day.